Welcome to part 5 of my procedural node series in Blender. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating a procedural landscape like the one you see in this animation. We're going to use one plane and that's going to be the rock and the grass texture and we're going to displace that. Then we're going to use a second plane for that water. So let's see how that's done. So we're going to start off, uh, we're going to delete this cube and this light as well and just bring in a plane. That's we're going to be doing most of our work on that. Let's size it up by a factor of 10, just in object mode. Let's not apply the scale. Now, let's bring in a light here. And I'm just going to choose a sun. Just raise it up there and move it out of our way. It doesn't really matter where the sun is. It just matters where the angle is. But I'm just going to move it to the side of the scene there so it's not distracting me. And then come over here to the right side. And you're going to select the Cycles Render Engine and change it from Supported to Experimental. And if you have a GPU, you can select GPU Compute like I've done, and it saves you a bit of time. Then select your plane, and come down here to the Material Properties, select that. And we're going to create a new material over here, hit New. Let's call this uh, Displacement. And then scroll down in this tab, and we'll find Settings, and where it says Displacement, you're going to change it from Bump Only to Displacement and Bump. Let's go ahead and separate our screen here and open up the shader editor on the left side. So I'm going to delete this principled BDSF and I'm going to add in a noise texture and a wave texture. We're going to use those two textures to primarily control what we're doing here. Let's take a look at what these textures are doing. This noise texture is just a clouded texture here and I'm going to adjust the scale, change this to 10. And this wave texture it's a bunch of diagonal lines. I'm going to adjust the scale, change it to 1, make it much bigger texture, and then change the distortion to 21.4. That makes it kind of wavy. So looking at this image, uh, I was just thinking, you know, the, we've got gray to white, but I don't see any black yet, and I don't really see a lot of white areas. So you can actually adjust that using a node called the color ramp. Let me bring this in. And uh, basically when I drag this black slider up, it turns that whole bottom half of the range, like the gray to black, just turns that all into black. So I'm going to set this value to 0.441, and this top value, the white, is going to be set to 0.891. And I'm going to do something very similar with the wave texture here. Plug the color into the factor, and we're just going to adjust this bottom value to 0.223. Let's see what that does. Just makes these bands a little thicker. Next up, what we're going to do is mix these two nodes together. Not just a straight mix, though. Let's open up this mix node, and instead of attaching this noise to color 1, we're going to take and attach it to the factor there. So it's going to become more like a mask. And what this does is it uh, creates anywhere where there was black before, all these areas. They're just going to be this color, the gray color, which is just this neutral gray. Uh, R, G, and B are all set to 0.5. And anything that was, you know, on the lighter side of the scale on this image here um, is now going to be affected by this texture. It should be this texture. So let's see that mix again, and that's what we're looking at here. So I looked at this image, and again, I just wanted to add more blacks and whites to it. So same thing again. You can use the color ramp to do that. Let's put that on there. And this bottom value, I'm going to set this at 0.355, this top value. I'm going to set it to 0.686. So that makes it a bit more dynamic. I've got a lot of areas that are just pure black and a lot more white areas there. Next up, let's add in a displacement node. We're going to take the color from the color ramp, plug it into the height, and we can plug this displacement into the displacement on our material output. We see something kind of funky happening. Uh, it's not working correctly because we haven't subdivided this mesh. But I just want to show you something real quick before we do. If you take the displacement and plug it into the surface, you get this pretty interesting, funky looking texture. You know, if you wanted to use that for something, it might be kind of neat. Anyway, let's unplug that. And I'm going to tab into edit mode and subdivide this mesh. I'm going to subdivide it 40 times. And now if we tab back out, let's plug into this guy here again. We can see what's happening. It's displacing this mesh, but it's displacing it way too much. So I'm going to scale down uh, right here to 0 0.075. And this is what I used. It just looks a lot more mellow here. The next step is to duplicate this color ramp and bring it up here. 
And I'm going to touch this color to the factor again, but I'm going to bring these values in a little bit. This bottom one I'm going to set to 0 0.441, and this top value I'm going to set to 0 0.532. So you can see here uh, this black area is going to be where my one texture is, and the texture is going to go you know, into the gray as well. And then the white areas are going to be where my second texture is. So first of all, I'm going to bring in a mix shader. I'm going to plug this color into the factor. And then we're going to bring in two principled BDSFs. For this top shader, this is another Node Wrangler shortcut. You can hit Control Shift T while that shader is highlighted. And you can just import an entire texture all at once. I've got this polygon one that I like, ground forest, and uh, I'm just going to select the color, the gloss, and the normal map, and import those, and it just attaches everything really quickly. It's really nice. And this is going to go into the bottom socket of this mix shader. I'm going to do something similar for this other principal BDSF. I'm going to use a texture, though, that I got from textures.com, and it's of a cliff face there. So. select the color, the normal map, and the roughness, just like that. So if I go back into rendered mode, and I look at this right here, you can see, I have to connect this guy as well, we can see those textures are starting to appear. So looking at these textures, they just look like they're a little bit too big. And luckily, when I use that Node Wrangler shortcut, it set up these mapping nodes for me. This is the one controlling the grass texture, and I'm going to left click and drag over these three scale input fields and I can select them all at once. I'm going to hit 10 and that's making the grass texture much smaller. I'm going to go to this rock mapping node and do something similar. I'm going to select them all and type in 15. Now the, the rock texture is smaller as well. Still looks a little angular there so I'm going to add a modifier and I'm going to add a subsurf modifier. Turn this up to 3. and that's already looking a lot better. Let's also add a displace texture here. Uh, we're going to add a, a modifier called displace and then click new where it says texture there and I'm going to change this strength to something much lower. Let's go like 0 .005 and I'm going to click on this and it's going to take me to the textures tab and I'm going to select clouds and then change this size to 0 .001 just something again really small and what that's done is it's just made just close up just the train a little bit more bumpy and irregular. Next let's add in another plane. This is going to be our water and let's size it up by 10 again and lower it down a little bit. Something like that. Looks pretty good. I'm going to isolate it with the slash and just go into top down mode and add a new material. Let's call this water. Alright, I've already got a water. That's water one. And then over here, let's delete this principal BDSF and we're going to add in two noise textures, just like this. This top one, we're going to set the scale to 60 and the detail to 5. And this bottom one, we're going to set the scale to 140 and the detail to 5 again, just like that. So looking at these two textures, we've got one texture that's basically bigger than the other texture. The top one's bigger. And we're going to add in a color ramp and just affect that top texture. So let's feed that in here. Let's take a look. I'm going to adjust this bottom black value to 0.336. And this top white value, I'm going to bring it down to 0.537, just like that. And then I'm going to mix this with the, the other noise texture. But I'm going to use this top noise texture as a factor and plug this other noise texture into color 1. This color 2 is just that neutral gray color that is set up by default. Next up, I'm going to add in a bump note and feed this mix into the height. And then I'm going to add in a glossy shader. And this normal is going to go into the normal of my glossy shader. And if we look at this, um, you know, we can see what's going on here. It's just kind of got this pattern on some areas of this mesh. We're going to need to adjust this, but before we do, let's put in some HDRI lighting because that's really going to help improve the look of what we're looking at here. Over here on the World Properties tab, 
click this and come over here to where it says color under the background there and next to where it says color on the circle click there and you're going to go to environment texture then you go to open and you have to find where your HDRs are saved I've downloaded these ones from HDRI Haven it's a great website with a lot of free textures and HDRIs I would check it out and I've got this one here I'm gonna set this up open it in and there we go so I'm gonna decrease this roughness and we can see a bit better what's happening here this bump map uh, you know it seems like it's pretty high I'm gonna tone that down a little bit here change this strength to 0.5 and I'm gonna change this distance to 0 0.05 and that's looking much better uh, it's looking kinda like water now so what I'd like to do is make this a little bit more transparent and a great way to do that with water is with this Fresnel node let's look at what this is doing if we look at it from this angle here it looks lighter but if we look at it head-on it looks darker so we can use this as a factor in a mixed shader to control two different other shaders I'm gonna use my glossy and add in a transparent let's add a translucent let's get a transparent there we go so plug this into the top and plug the glossy into the bottom and let's see what this is doing so now when we go at an angle like this it's glossy and when we're looking at it straight on it's see-through so I think what we need is a little bit more glossiness and a little bit less transparency and I think the easiest way to do that is to bring in a color ramp and attach it to this Fresnel node and if we think about this with this mixed shader we want more of this glossy showing through which means the second socket which also means that we want more white in our final uh, material coming from this part here so I'm gonna crank this white value down and let's see what happens it looks like it's becoming a lot more reflective or glossy and a little bit less transparent so it looks pretty good and let's go ahead and bring the rest of our scene back and let's see what it looks like yeah it's looking a lot better you can see we've got some transparency and especially when it gets further away it's a lot of glossiness so one thing is uh, I don't really want all these houses in the background I prefer if it was just clouds there when I'm looking at this image from here so let's go ahead and adjust this HDRI what we can do over here in the shader properties or shader editor pardon me is go to object and change it to world and then we can find our HDRI here If we clicked on this texture and hit control T which is another node wrangler shortcut it brings up this mapping and texture coordinate node and then where it says Z location you can change this to point one and that's actually enough to do it uh, so now we just have clouds in the background looks much nicer the last thing I did is I animated this scale value on my displacement node let's uh, click on here I'm gonna set it to zero and I'm on frame one and we're gonna hover over this input field and hit I it just captures a keyframe. Now I've got my keyframe down here. I'm going to duplicate that and move it to frame 10. And then go to frame 150 and set this to point 0.075. Hover over this field again and hit I. And now I've got a keyframe at 150. I'm going to select these first two keyframes here and go to my graph editor. And then I can hit V and it'll just uh, make that a straight line with my speed. So it means it'll go at a consistent speed for the first part of the animation until it slowly starts to slow down at this point right here so it looks a little bit more organic at the ending now that we have everything set up let's take a step back here and view the whole plane again and let's talk about how we might change this material here or this this texture here I'm gonna scroll over here to the beginning of my pattern and look at the wave texture this is one of the main ways that you could change it uh, with the scale or distortion let's move this down to 0.4 for instance and let's see what happens so now we see only two uh, areas of water just this river and this small pond let's see what's going on with that wave texture and we can see that it's just these two dark areas that are just putting water in so we can kind of customize that we could turn this up to like maybe five and see what happens and there's a whole bunch of stuff happening now it's just this this huge mix of uh, rivers there let's t turn this texture back on and 
yeah, it's just kind of updated for us, just putting rock and grass. And we could adjust all these color ramps as well. Let's try adjusting this distortion. Let's turn this down to like 2. So we can see everything's kind of heading in the same direction there again. Let's bring the scale down. And now we've just got these two bands running through. I guess three bands. Let's try adjusting that noise texture there. Let's see what happens. So if we adjust this here, this scale, to one, it just blocks out way bigger areas where those lakes don't form. So it kind of just adds in this big area of grass here. Um, you know, if that's what you wanted. Okay. But if you put this up, it's going to add a lot more detail. Let's put it to like 50 or something. And now we can see it's just too much for our subdivisions. Uh, so it looks a little weird. But uh, it's also kind of cool, you know. Maybe for this one, it would make sense to adjust this color ramp right after the noise texture. Let's take a look at this noise texture. It's probably going to be a whole bunch of really dark spots. Yeah, so let's just ease up on this black, on this color ramp here. Let's bring it all the way down to basically zero. Whoa. Let's leave it there. Okay, and then let's go back to viewing this texture. Let's, let's see what happened. Okay, now it's basically two rivers. So, you know, again, kind of interesting. Let's just change this distortion. It's a little boring when it's so low. Let's go to five. Got some bends there. And let's change the scale to point four, three. Why not? And while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and click on this wave texture and I hit control T and that's a shortcut for Node Wrangler. Let's go back to one here and I'm just gonna go ahead and view the color ramp right after the wave texture here. Just go it, it'll load in a little faster. Let me see what I'm doing. So with this location here we can move this and it'll just move these bands across. So I guess it's not loading as quick as I thought it would. But we can see this is basically just gives you an unlimited texture. You know, you can adjust these numbers and it'll give you a different section of this procedural landscape. So let's try this one here. And I'll just, you know what, I'm going to adjust the scale as well. Let's go like this, 0.5. So it should make these rivers bigger. There we go. And then come over here and view this. And there we go. And there's a lot of rock. Why don't we just change this uh, ramp right here? Because this is controlling how much rock and how much grass there is. Let's scale that back a bit more. You can see how you can play around with it anyways. There's a lot of possibilities here. And uh, one thing to take note of as well is when you're in this experimental mode, the rendering does take a little bit longer. So, you know, in the future, uh, we might look into how to bake this displacement map and use it like that instead to save on rendering time. Anyways, thanks for watching.